they'll ask me to do a couple of miscellaneous items at first, just about therapy in general. So uh, I guess the first thing would be what is the technical definition of physical therapy? So if you look at it, what we do is we examine um, individuals, and basically what we're doing is looking for ability to move, uh, reduce pain, and restore function and prevent disability. So I think the key thing to look through that is just that uh, we're mainly looking at uh, movement throughout, whether it's shoulders, backs, necks, and if there's anything dysfunctional about it, decreased range of motion, decreased strength, and we uh, basically do a plan of care through that. Uh, so primarily what we do here uh, is a lot of therapeutic exercise. Uh, so that could be rotator cuff strengthening, uh, dynamic lumbar stabilization exercises, leg strengthening, um, as well as range of motion exercises. Uh, the manual therapy would be uh, when we're stretching somebody, or we could do joint mobilizations or uh, manipulation. Um, the modalities we use are typically uh, electrical stimulation, ultrasound, heat packs, cold packs, as well as uh, neuromuscular reeducation. Uh, that could be if someone's having a difficult time after the scale reconstruction, uh, getting their quad muscle fires, uh, we do exercises for that, and also uh, electrical stim for that to help get the muscle fire, um, as well as more balance training, et cetera. Uh, we also tend to do quite a bit of bracing orthotics, um, and then we do quite a bit of uh, gait training with assistive devices, whether that be a walker, a cane, et cetera. And then we do also provide quite a bit of education to the uh, patient. So a um, couple of misconceptions, uh, in the state of Ohio, we can see a patient by direct access for up to 30 days. Uh, so that means that you don't have to have a doctor's referral if it's private insurance. So Medicare and Medicaid are the only exceptions to that where we have to have a doctor's referral. But at that same token, if we have our evaluations at the very end, we have, a lot of times have the uh, send it to the physician and then we'll sign it at the bottom. Uh, it'll have our plan on there and that can actually act as the uh, referral anyways. And uh, the other uh, misconception is that we only take referrals from inside of uh, where doctors or physician assistants related to Worcester Orthopedics. Uh, they can be from uh, any uh, physician, nurse practitioner, uh, physician assistant. Uh, basically, we can treat almost the whole body. Uh, we can do uh, cervicogenic headaches. Uh, I've treated people for uh, TMJ disorder, which would be for the jaw. Uh, neck pain, back pain. Uh, we did learn how to treat all of the uh, upper extremities. Um, sometimes there's a misconception between whether occupational therapy or physical therapy can be treated here. Uh, so we will do uh, tennis elbow, uh, golfer's elbow, any sort of tendonitis down in the wrist and hand, carpal tunnel, either before surgery or after. Same thing with cubital tunnel. Uh, we'll also do wrist and finger fractures. Uh, we do trigger finger releases, or we see them after trigger finger release. Uh, biceps tendon, the distal biceps tendon repairs, and all our nerve transpositions. So uh, some of where we will send off the occupational therapy is if the, it's a hand surgeon that repaired like a specific tendon in the finger and he has a specific protocol that he wants to follow. And sometimes we'll actually put on there if we want to see occupational therapy specifically. And then the same thing is if they need like custom hand splints that are made and that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of times occupational therapy will do more so of that. And then also we'll do all of the uh, lower extremity as well. So getting into uh, neck pain, uh, all the studies I find is that uh, the adult population, almost half of all, everybody's going to have neck pain that's going to seek uh, medical treatment for throughout their life. And almost 40% of the elderly population are going to need to see a, a med seek medical attention for their neck pain. So it's a pretty common thing you're going to see. Uh, some of the things that we see that tend to predispose people to having neck pain, uh, women tend to have more neck pain than men. Uh, the older we get, the more likely you are going to have neck pain as well. Uh, if you've previously had a history of neck pain, and specifically neck pain that radiates down into the arm or has weakness, you're very likely to probably have it again at some point. Uh, and then the big ones, which I'm going to cover a lot of too, is the environmental factors, uh, which uh, we'll cover in a, our theory in a, just a little bit, but prolonged poor postures is one of the big reasons why a lot of people actually do get neck and uh, back pain as well as repetitively lifting, especially lifting in, in poor postures. And then also genetics will play a role into that as well. So some of the uh, descriptors that you may see uh, people come in with or diagnosis-wise when they have neck pain, it could be a disc bulge or herniation, uh, cervical uh, spinal stenosis, which is the narrowing of either the spinal canal or where the nerves exit. Uh, and I have a model here in just a minute. Uh, there's also as well as uh, 
uh, arthritis, whether it be rheumatoid or osteoarthritis, whiplash, just a general sprain strain of the neck, uh, degenerative disc disease, or radiculopathy. So this, if you take out the uh, actual disc bulge to a, a herniation here, this would be just the little anatomy of the, the neck. So this is just one individual vertebrae. Uh, the spinal cord's here. You have two nerves that exit. And then you have discs that act as cushions uh, and shock absorptions. Uh, and this would be the front and this would be the back of the uh, vertebrae. So what you can see is that we see a lot of people in very poor postures like this. And essentially what that's doing is putting a lot of pressure on the front of the disc. And I use this analogy a lot with my patients that the discs are almost like jelly donuts. So if you're consistently putting pressure on the front of the jelly donut, all the jelly is going to go to the back. So if people are consistently in positions like this and putting loads on the front of the disc, you're more likely to see disc bulges or ultimately a herniation at that point. And that gets back to this where you can actually have herniations go directly into the spinal cord. But the most common is a posterior lateral where it's going to come off to the side and hit a nerve. So this nerve is going to cover and spawn with uh, both the sensory and a motor component, um, depending where it's being hit or pinched at. The sensory and the motor component, each individual nerve, um, so from C1 uh, down to, to C7, and then there's a C8 nerve that exits below there. They each correspond with different muscles in the area of the uh, skin where they may have symptoms. So that would be related to what we call a cervical radiculopathy, which would be a pain that originates in the neck that uh, radiates down into the arm. Uh, so this could be either described as uh, numbness and tingling, um, uh, burning, uh, or just a diminished sensation down the period. Uh, they could also have diminished or absent reflexes. So if this is from the neck, it would be in the upper extremity at that point, uh, as well as having weakness in the uh, upper extremities. So these would be a couple of different pain patterns that you'd see common, like with C4 or C5 or C7, uh, depending where it's getting uh, pinched at that point. So our main uh, line of defense and what we mainly use in physical therapy, especially here, is what's called MDT, which is the Mechanical Diagnosis and Treatment. And the common layman's term for that would be the McKenzie treatments. Um, so with the McKenzie treatments, what we're doing is repetitive neck movements, it, since we're looking at the neck right now. And what we're trying to do is uh, assess the effects of your arm symptoms if you have it, whether it be weakness, numbness and tingling, whether it's changed. Uh, I mean, we actually want to see a change, whether it's better, worse, or about the same at that point. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is actually make mechanical changes. If there's a disc issue, we want to change where the fluid is at or is it depending on where the joint positioning. So if the joint's not positioned correctly, we actually want to try to do a specific maneuver to try to get it to, uh, get back in the correct place. Uh, this may include joint mobilizations, which I'll show in a minute, as well as a lot of posture education as well. So the first exercise that we commonly give out uh, just for one type of uh, neck pain, and this could be radiating down into the arm as well. Uh, basically, we have people do a cervical retraction which is essentially just trying to get people out of the posture that they're constantly in anyways. So that what we have them do is they're actually doing a motion like that, and we have them avoid the forward component, and we have them do sets of 10 of this. Um, a lot of times if it's helping and beneficial, five to six, even eight times throughout the day, uh, just to break it up. Uh, so basically, again, I would if someone came in with arm pain, I would give them this exercise. I want to see if the pain, whether it travels up further, whether it goes down further into the uh, hands, or if, the, if they have weakness, after, uh, when we evaluated that, if it was weak, um, I want to see if there's any change on that. So if someone were to get a change with that, the second step a lot of times I have to do would be the cervical retraction with the extension component. Um, so again, we see this a lot, um, especially for being in the poor postures. And then uh, if you go back to the whole disc model I was referring to, uh, where it showed the disc being herniated, what, the whole goal is for us to get the jelly or the gel or the water go forward and get off of the nerve at that point. Uh, another thing that we commonly give out, uh, whether it be a towel roll or a McKenzie roll, uh, we correct people's sleeping postures at night uh, so that they're, again, not in a position where they're constantly forward like that. And then uh, this would be the joint mobilizations that I was referring to earlier where we actually would put our hands on somebody's neck 
and we actually start doing uh, gentle rocking or uh, mobiliz mobilizing specific segments in the neck, depending on where we uh, find the issue to be. Uh, another thing that we uh, commonly do over in therapy would be a spinal decompression, uh, and the common term for that would be like a cervical traction. Uh, now this could be either a, a machine that we uh, use, I have a picture of that, or it could be mechanic or uh, manual with uh, the therapist actually providing the distraction to the neck itself. And there's also spinal decompression exercises as well. So this would be a picture of the uh, traction where we have somebody, we actually have a strap across their head and in their neck, and it's providing a pull uh, to uh, help distract the neck, and actually we want to see a little bit of a change in between the vertebrae. Uh, now, this could be for someone with like a degenerative disc disease, where throughout the day when they stand, gravity uh, tends to compress the spine and they tend to lose the fluid throughout the day. Uh, this would help put the fluid back in. Uh, or this also, we could use this if someone's had like either a disc herniation or a uh, uh, disc bulge because it has kind of has a vacuum effect. Uh, another thing that we a lot of times do is like scapular strengthening, uh, but we could also do this in the uh, an exercise that's kind of like a spinal decompression because we have them uh, laying on a uh, either a half thumb roll or a full thumb roll uh, while they're laying on their back. And again, it's the same thing. We find a lot of people their shoulders start rounding forward, and if we get them in a more upright posture, it's beneficial and it's strengthening back there. Uh, another thing that we will treat for necks, uh, we actually see uh, suboccipital headaches which is where uh, there's a muscle that runs here. If people are constantly forward like this, this muscle can spasm, which pinches a nerve, and it can cause a headache in a distribution of like a ram's horn. And a lot of times, not only will we do some of the same exercises that uh, we showed earlier uh, for the McKenzie stuff, but we could also do some manual therapy aspects, uh, such as a, like a suboccipital release or suboccipital rock. Uh, the release is where we would just do gentle uh, massage in the back of the uh, occiput and try to work so that the muscle spasms decrease. Um, at suboccipital rock leaders, similar concept. Um, and then again, the posture would be the biggest thing that we're trying to correct throughout the day. So even if we give people exercises to do, if they just constantly go back to six to eight hours in front of the computer in bad posture, um, more than likely the problem's still gonna uh, be there. So we will also do a lot of times with uh, workplace ergonomics, uh, making sure the chair is kind of at like a 90 degree uh, angle, they're in an upright position, the monitor's uh, about the height of the eyes at that point, and just taking breaks and getting up and moving around every 30 minutes. Uh, and then the other thing that we'll treat is uh, neck surgeries. Now this could be a uh, cervical fusion where they actually fuse part of the spine together, a disectomy where they took, and they can actually do a disectomy and a fusion together, but the disectomy would be um, fail on all other conservative treatments and if you still have a disc herniation, uh, they'd go in there and trim that up. Um, and a lot of these progressions are going to be based on the protocols uh, with both the surgeon's preference as well as uh, the scientific uh, aspects of that uh, when you're allowed to do certain exercises based off the healing times. So now we're going to get to the back pain. So this is a very common thing that we'll see uh, people coming in with. Uh, we, we've seen in the studies that almost 80% of adults will experience some sort of back pain that will cause them to have medical, uh, or seek medical treatment. It, uh, back pain is actually the leading cause of disability worldwide and is the second most common cause of uh, doctor's visits minds behind the common cold. So the risk factors for uh, someone to be predisposed to have uh, back pain, uh, males are going to be more likely to have than females. Uh, the age, uh, same thing, the older we get, we're tend to more likely to have uh, low back pain. Uh, if you've had a previous history of low back pain, especially pain that radiates down into the legs or causes weakness in the legs, you're more likely to have it again. Uh, and the same environmental factors are key here with uh, the prolonged poor postures as well as repetitive lifting. Especially, uh, we see a lot of people lifting, you know, they always tell you not to lift with your back uh, versus more of the squatting positions. And there's certain genetic components, again, that are going to be uh, excuse me, uh, more likely to uh, cause you to have back pain too as well. Uh, so some of the same descriptors and diagnoses that we saw earlier. So the disc bulge, disc herniation, uh, the spinal stenosis. Uh, again, that could be the central canal stenosis where the spinal cord uh, is actually, it's narrowing there or when the nerves exit, uh, spring strain or sciatica. 
So uh, lumbar radiculopathy is very similar to uh, how a lot of people are calling sciatica, where they get actually pain that radiates down into the leg. Uh, but again, it's originating in the back. Uh, so you could actually have pain, or it could be numbness, tingling, burning. Uh, same thing, you could see the diminished reflexes in both the uh, patellar tendons of the knee or down in the Achilles, which would be the ankle. Uh, and then you could see uh, decreased strength, and it could be throughout the lower extremity. Uh, but a common one you'll see is a drop foot where people are walking and their foot, they can't feel like they can pick it up uh, just because their dorsiflexures are weak. Uh, so same thing, you could actually see some of the uh, nerve patterns where you could actually see the back pain. And it could just be back pain itself, it could be rating in the front of the leg, down into the uh, feet, or down to the side of the, or back of the leg at that point as well. So the MDT or the McKenzie method is usually the first method that we all try. Same thing when we have someone with back pain, especially back pain that radiates down in the legs. Uh, so what we're doing is the repetitive movements of the back uh, and trying to assess the changes, uh, you know, with the goal to alleviate the pressure uh, from the nerve if there's a nerve pinched um, or change the symptoms down in the leg if it's there or in the back itself. Uh, so the same thing that may include the joint mobilizations, which we showed for the neck, but only into the low back, as well as posture education. So the common exercise that we get people to do uh, is laying on their stomach at first, and uh, that is just like a gentle uh, beginning stages of a lumbar extension, which would be the motion going backwards. Uh, and then it, if people are doing well with that, a lot of times we'll progress them coming up on their elbows. And then lastly, doing a press up where they're arching their back as far back as they can at that point. Uh, a lot of times we'll do a set of uh, 10 of repetitions of these. Uh, we may have them do again six to eight times throughout the day, and then we're just reassessing the symptoms down in the leg. <clears throat> so another common one, uh, since people can't just always start getting on the floor at work and start doing press-ups, <laughs> kind of you can actually do a uh, repetitive extension standing as well. Uh, and then this is a common thing we give out. I give this out a lot of times for neck pain as well or any sort of... Uh, thoracic pain, which fits mine, is either putting a towel roll or a McKenzie roll behind someone's back, which is going to um, affect uh, their posture. Uh, same thing, we have um, McKenzie rolls, or sometimes we have them use like a beach towel and wrap around uh, their stomach to uh, provide if they're sleeping on their back, so they're not in that flexed position all the time, try to get them in a more of an extended position. Um, and then a couple other things that we will see us do, we could also do like a dynamic lumbar stabilization, which I have some pictures uh, uh, showing to that. But basically what we're trying to do is do some core stabilization exercises. Uh, we also have a lumbar traction, which would be very similar to a cervical traction length for the back. Um, and then we also use uh, ultrasound, electrical stimulation, and heat and cold packs. But we could do those for either the neck or the back at that point. So, uh, this would be an example of a dynamic lumbar stabilization exercise uh, where he's keeping his core tight and his belly button tucked in and he's actually um, moving his arms in and out and he naturally with the resistance he's wanted to try to twist or turn his spine and a lot of the core muscles, I mean that's really the core function is to prevent you from twisting or moving at that point. Uh, this would be a picture of the lumbar traction which we have a very similar unit here. Uh, where we would ha have you uh, wrapped in uh, both in the upper abdomen and kind of right around the hips. And then a lot of times we put something underneath your knees and then the machine's trying to provide you a pull at that point. Um, again, we could use this for a, either a disc herniation or a, 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 a displacement uh, or a bulge because it kind of acts like a vacuum effect or a very common thing that we'll see is a degenerative disc disease where we're trying again to put pull the, the vertebrae apart to bring the fluid back in uh, to the disc. Uh, ultrasounds, uh, we can use this almost all over the body at this point. Uh, what this does is it provides a deeper heat uh, than what a hot pack or, uh, would. Uh, it also increases the blood flow to the area. And what we're using is a uh, sound waves uh, will actually go through the skin uh, to, to again either warm up the uh, tissue or uh, just to increase the blood flow depending on which settings we use. Uh, so a lot of times this can be beneficial for muscle spasms or just having pain back there or to, uh, if someone's tight, sometimes we'll do the, the ultrasound to help uh, provide the deeper heat so that we can stretch them a little easier. 
and uh, we use a lot of electrical stimulation as well, uh, which the function of that, it, it, the uh, electrical impulse is essentially block, block the pain signal to the brain. Um, and depending on which settings we use for electrical stimulation, sometimes uh, we wouldn't use it for the back, but like I was discussing earlier with ACLs, uh, we could put electrical stim pads on someone's quadricep muscle, and it could cause that muscle to contract, if, especially after surgery, they're having a hard time getting that muscle to uh, contract. Uh, and same thing, we could use certain uh, electrical stim settings to help reduce swelling as well. All right, uh, same things that we see for uh, neck surgeries, we can treat for back surgeries as well. Uh, they also do lumbar fusions and they can do disectomies, and those don't have to be either or, they could be a combination of the two. Uh, and again, a lot of times the uh, progressions that we're doing is based off the surgeon's protocol as well as uh, the protocols that we tend to find. Uh, it, it's all based off the scientific aspects of the, when things are healed and when we're allowed doing things. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, once you explain your like, schooling, I think that they're doing that. So these are therapists like, okay. okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so right now in the state of Ohio, uh, and I think almost all throughout the country, they, they are uh, to sit for your board exam. Almost all physical therapy schools and went to a doctoral program, uh, but uh, or it could have been uh, previously a master's program as well as a bachelor's degree. So everyone uh, may have. Anybody who is a physical therapist is licensed, they all have their license and they all want to do the schooling at that point. Um, the physical therapist assistants, uh, that would be an associate's degree, um, uh, they have to operate under the uh, physical therapist. So your first day you'd see the physical therapist for the evaluation and then um, the uh, physical therapist assistants can do the uh, aspects of treatment as long as it's in the plan of care. So whichever physical therapist you saw the first day, uh, generally oversees your entire care, even if you're seeing some of the phys uh, physical therapist assistants as well. Uh, they're all licensed as well. And then Sandy, the athletic training background, uh, it, it, same thing as well with that too. Any other questions? What if you have some of those back radiculopathy symptoms, pinch nerve, whatever, and you choose to, <clears throat> you know, or it hopes that it goes away, and it doesn't. So you, you end up prolonging going to get treatment. Are you risking permanent damage to nerves? Uh, you can. So basically, nerves are almost like little humans. So if you were to almost like strangle a human for too long, obviously you would die at that point. Same thing if that nerve is pinched for too long and it doesn't have any oxygen, uh, you're going to have it where it may not regenerate at that point. So uh, seeking treatment when you get it is generally a great idea. Uh, same thing, especially if it's like a disc bulge, uh, it's just starting to come out and, and you can get the treatment and we can move the fluid forward. That would be a lot easier to treat as opposed to someone who's got a full herniation where the fluid is uh, much further out. Uh, and, you know, anytime you start getting the symptoms, especially like weakness and pain on the leg, you know, advisable to go to see a doctor to see uh, more therapy to see what you should be doing. I went to Walsh. I went to Kent for undergrad and Walsh for grad school. What do you like to do when you're not here working? <laughs> uh, I train MMA three times a week. Uh, I don't compete in it at all. I just train. I think it's fun. And uh, I like to golf. What did you say first? You train in what? MMA, so the mixed martial arts. <laughs> Any billing questions or anything I would do that drive you crazy that you need to fix? Anything I do clinical wise that might be crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Does, um, for like, if you're treating different patients that have the same surgery by different 
different surgeons? Does their post-op protocol change a lot from surgeon to surgeon? Or Some of it depends. So, uh, you know, not all surgeries are the same, obviously, too. I mean, uh, I can't get into the, all the aspects of some model surgeons by all right. means anyways, but, uh, you know, a lot of it's based off what the surgeon's training is as well, and each individual patient as well, uh, you know, uh, certain people have healing constraints with diabetes, um, you know, if you have osteoporosis, I mean, there's a lot of different things depending on what it is, but that's going to affect the healing times as well. Uh, I mean, there's general standard healing times where, you know, soft tissue injuries to or to the pack you, or to the pack you. But it just depends on who the person is as well. And, you know, even like for example, you take a standard rotator cuff repair. Uh, depending on where it's torn, how bad the tear is, is it pulled apart? Uh, I mean, it's all going to have different uh, aspects to the healing for that too as well. Which very good. Uh, I like a variety of things. I think it's just nice, honestly, to see different things and uh, keep you on your toes. She is good. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. We all have that one. That's right. Uh, so I'm going to ask you about